Hello and welcome to the Australian Institute of International Affairs. My name is Rashi and today I'm joined by Dr. Lowell Batista, who's a lecturer at the School of Law at the University of Wollongong, New South Wales. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Dr. Batista. Pleasure. Um, I would like to begin by asking you your thoughts on the permanent code of arbitration's ruling in the South China Sea dispute and how significant do you think it is for the Philippines? Um, Rashi, thanks. Um, I strongly believe that the arbitral tribunal award is a clear legal and moral victory um, for the Philippines. I think it um, proves that uh, international law is a great equalizer um, and it's a victory not just for the Philippines or international but the rest of the community of nations. It's, a, it's proof that uh, international law can be used uh, for, for small states such as the Philippines who don't have the military capacity or the political and diplomatic will to enforce their claims in the South China Sea. Yeah. Um, what are the legal implications for the Philippines and what will it mean practically, for example, when it comes to fishing in the region? I think the arbitral tribunal presents three uh, very important um, pronouncements from, from the court that have, will have far-reaching consequences for not just for the Philippines but for the rest of the Cayman states in the South China Sea. I think the first one is that the court categorically, clearly um, pronounced that China's land dash claim does not hold basis in international law. And secondly, the court also made, made it clear that China's historical rights or historic title over the South China Sea um, has been extinguished by its accession to the convention. And finally, the court made it clear that there are no island features under Article 121.3 of the Convention of the Law of the Sea. Um, and these are just mere rocks which will generate um, territorial sea but not um, economic zone or continental shelf. In terms of uh, fishing rights, the court took occasion to um, rule that um, in the South China Sea there are traditional fishing rights um, specifically for countries such as China, even Taiwan, the Philippines and Vietnam. So what this means is that um, although the Scarborough Shoal, for instance, is within Philippine East uh, geographically, the Philippines cannot prohibit or ban other fishermen from these countries uh, who fish traditionally in this in these bodies of water, uh, but only it only covers um, artisanal or traditional fishers and not um, commercial those of a commercial nature. Okay. Um, what has the Philippines' response been to the decision so far? So I think Manila's response has been one of muted jubilation. So you can see um, on on um, on the ground that um, on the part of um, China there's anger, there's indignation, there is um, a feeling of betrayal. On the part of the Philippines. Um, it's it is a, um, a happy uh, occasion given the overwhelming victory in the in the award, but there's no there's no triumphalism. There's a it's, there's a de delicate and nuanced ha handling of the case. Um, the there's a feeling of it's more conciliatory and a non, non combative I think um, the Filipinos are aware that, that there's really no no uh, benefit to be gained by further embarrassing China or um, looting over the victory. So it's um, it's a general positive air in Manila, but uh, not one of um, uh, triumphalism or uh, one that will uh, unduly um, embarrass China. Indeed. Um, given that the tribunal has not ordered China to take any uh, particular steps in order to remedy the situation, or to sort of dismantle any construction on the islands, or even ask for reparations for the Philippines. Um, what do you think is a way forward to resolve the dispute over territorial claims in the South China Sea? I think the way to move forward is clearly through bilateral negotiations uh, on the basis of the sovereign equality of states. The court has made it clear, being mindful of its limits of jurisdiction, that the sovereignty issue remains unsettled. So since the sovereignty issue remains unresolved, there's still some space for negotiation and, of course, for third-party adjudications. So I can I can already predict that um, negotiations, negotiations will um, continue and that um, the party will be very mindful of the strong pronouncements put by the court based on the tribunal's ruling. Um, what will uh, Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte's policy approach be towards China? Do you think it will be more collaborative or confrontational? Of course, we are all aware we, the Philippines has a new president, President, president Rodrigo Duterte, and from, from early indication, I can already tell that it will be more conciliatory, less combative, it will be uh, more amicable towards Beijing, and I think China is also seeing that positive um, uh, aspect of their relationship being renewed um, in the short term. In fact, um, just recently when uh, the decision came out, 
uh, our new uh, foreign affairs secretary even um, called for restraint and sobriety uh, at the inauguration. Uh, Afterwards, there was a cabinet meeting. The president made it clear that, that the Philippines would adopt a no flaunt, no taunt policy. So I think Beijing should expect a more favorable um, atmosphere for renewed bilateral relationships, uh, relations, and uh, and the, the, the negotiations be more will be more amicable and conciliatory in general. Um, finally, um, do you think there may now be an escalation of regional tensions given there are multiple stakeholders with what I definitely hope not. But um, to be honest, I think there would be uh, the possibility of an es uh, increased tension, escalated um, risk of uh, miscalculation on the ground, and that should be expected. So I would predict that in the long, in the short term, there would be um, a period of rock. Uh, uh, instability in terms of um, the bilateral relationship, especially in respect of China. But in the long term, I think my prediction would be that uh, the relationship will be restored, it will, it will be repaired, and I would like to think that the relationship between Beijing and China is between Beijing and um, the, the Philippines is not just based on our differences on the South China Sea, but something more comprehensive, more resilient. So we should expect the relationship to be restored, and in fact, um, we should work towards that. So other than the legal aspect of the dispute, the political and diplomatic, they're really more important, and we should focus on that in the long term. Okay. Thank, you very much. Um, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. It was a great pleasure to have you. Thanks, um, for more information on the Australian Institute of International Affairs, please visit us at internationalaffairs.org.au. Thank you.